dragon off king kill on rings that reaper and uh yeah we got got a warrior ring what the hell no way we just got another warriors ring dude yep this is gonna be a good one Last time we did Lunar Diplomacy to unlock Lunar Spells and Armor, completed the Penguin Quest series for that juicy weekly Herblore XP, got 75 magic so we can use our Vanquish, and dabbled into a few 6th age quests for some quality of life upgrades. In this episode we're going to be pushing for 225 quest points, passing the halfway mark on our road to Questcape. The plan here is a bit random on the surface, but trust me, it will be worth it for Season 2. I don't want to spoil too much of what I had planned for after Questcape, but it will involve some in-game PVM, and a lot of those in-game bosses are easier, with Dominion Mines. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Dominion Mines, they're an unlock from the Dominion Tower, a minigame in which you can battle bosses from quests you've previously completed. The mines cost 1000 GP each, and you can place up to two at a time on the ground. When an enemy comes into contact with them, they explode, dealing 10,000 damage. Each, that is. They're a little bit niche, but incredibly useful. To unlock the ability to purchase Dominion Mines, there are three major hurdles. The first is getting into the tower, requiring completion of enough quests to unlock 20 of the relevant quest bosses. The second is getting 400 boss kills in the tower itself, which is pretty self-explanatory. The third is completing every special match. But we'll touch on that in a later episode. The plan for today is to get through that first hurdle and unlock the tower. To save myself a lot of headaches getting the 400 kill count, I'm planning on specifically targeting the quests with easy bosses. Of course we'll be doing more than just questing in this episode. I want to try and unlock invention, and we've got to get them reaper tasks done, right? Maybe we can even run some more beastmasters to try and get that mass cap ability codex. Today's Reaper is Barrows, so to kick things off we're doing the Lair of Tarnraiser lore mini quest. Not only does this mini quest unlock an easy Dominion Tower boss, but it allows us to upgrade our salve amulet so we'll do even more damage against undead foes, like Barrows. With that out of the way, let's see if we get anything from the Reaper task. Okay, second chest, what do we get? Oh! An Aram Zord! We take! We take! Before we go questing, I want to upgrade the Slayer Lodge on Anachronia, which grants 3% more damage dealt on the island. I'm just going to keep working on this one passively, I think. These dailies just got a 75 mining, which is required for Plague's End and No Met's Allergy. Kind of huge. I'm especially excited for Plague's End so I can unlock Priftiness. Maybe something for next episode? And monthly statues get a 69 prayer. Nice. Troll Invasion coming in with a huge 80 herb lore, which is required for Light Within and River of Blood. More big name quests for later. With our chores out of the way, we can finally quest, starting out with Creature of Fingered Strain to get our Ring of Karos and finishing up the last requirement to start the Garden of Tranquility. Then, you guessed it, I was off to start the Garden of Tranquility to get our Ring of Karos enchanted. We also need this for the Curse of a Rav quest down the line for Dominion Tower special matches, but that's a later problem. What is not a later problem is that for this quest I need to wait for some veggies to grow, so I'm going to go train some thieving to get safes unlocked and come back in a bit. There's 61 thieving coming in. I reckon we've waited long enough, so let's see if our crops are grown and we continue with the quest. Mmm, great. We need to wait for the garden to grow too, so back to thieving for 62 so we can finish up a guild of our own mini quest and unlock safe cracking for when we want to train thieving later. With that all done, the garden is finally finished growing so we can complete the Garden of Tranquility. What a nightmare of a quest. Now it's time to hunt down Sorok Magis in the What Lies Below mini quest. This unlocks the Chaos Tunnels and is required for our next quest, Defender of Varrock, an immediate prerequisite for the Curse of a Rav. Since we're just focusing on unlocking easy bosses for now, I'm going to drop this quest line here and just take the XP reward. Unfortunately, I accidentally stopped recording my screen right after starting the quest, so I've pulled the quest end screen from the wiki so you can see the rewards. We wrapped up this little quest session with the Vampire Slayer to unlock Count Draenor for the Dominion Tower. Easy 10 minute quest. Taking a wee break from questing, and here we are at the player owned farm, and we've finally got enough beans to unlock Adam and Tite. We'll bring a random unchecked animal every 6 hours for the cost of 100 beans. Hoping it'll bring us a breeding pair or something soon so we can upgrade from our chicken sheep cow setup. I've also been AFKing some archaeology, and we just hit level 60! I could technically get and use a dragon matic at this point, but I think I'm going to do 60 to 70 with the Orichalcum matic I made up earlier, and then stop at 70 until I can get a crystal matic. I'll just check my statue bag. And it is full. So I'm gonna go hand these rocks in and see if we can't get a couple of levels from that. That's quite a good little D&D to just do. You get a good chunk of XP from it.
they got us a herb law level to 81 by making level to 58 and a room crafting level to 57. We have been doing our caches religiously on the account since we started and here it's paying off. Level 90 and divination, one of the requirements, luminous wisps, but more importantly we unlock ports adventurer, the memory, so we can finally go complete the ports tutorial and get that happening because there's some massive time gates behind ports. Here we go, into the port portal. Oh, and now straight away, let's talk to the partner to get this started. So we have just completed the ports tutorial and got ourselves our captain's log. That's very nice. So now I've got an easy teleport back to ports. That's grand. I just noticed there was a roar of Osseus. I just decided to do it. It's just finished up. It took us to 62 agility. We were level 60 at the start. We're probably getting about 40k XP per hour when we were going at the fastest. But we managed to pull another 29 codex pages and we found the totem of summoning top and the totem of treasure middle on that run as well. Yeah, but after that we royal, we now have 51 codex pages. I need 500 for double surge, so I suppose we're a tenth of the way there. So while I was doing that raw hour, I had to get my ring of wealth out, and I realized that I could probably stew boost my crafting and use a super magic boss to boost my magic. That I could make an onyx ring and enchant it into a ring of fortune, which would offer the same teleports as a ring of wealth, but infinite charges, and would improve the drop chances for slightly higher level bosses and slayer creatures. Thank goodness I checked my furnace before or I did my stew boosting there because I discovered that I had absolutely no gold in there. Whoops. Onyx ring crafted. And it only took two stew boosts to get the plus six level required. Now that we got the onyx ring made, uh, it's time to enchant it. I need 87 magic for that. I'm only 77. So I'm pretty sure a super magic pot takes us up to that level just. So there we go. Level six enchant. And we have a ring of fortune. Epic. Well, here we are making sure to do our tears of gothic sweetly. Oh, we collected our tears. We've got two more fletching levels up to level 52. We can now make broadleaf arrows. So I'm, I'm going to need to get smoking kills done soon so I can start buying those arrow tips. It's a really good way to train fletching as an iron meme. And I am going to need some serious fletching levels if I'm going to get my quest cape. So I was just doing my daily Nemi and we got 70 prayer, which is the level required for Augury, Piety and Rigor, the most powerful damage boosting prayers on the normal spellbook. Catch is, they require completion of King's Ransom Quest, Nightwaves Training Grounds Mini Quest and level 70 defense. I still need to get 75 attack as well so I can use Vanquish as a melee weapon, so if I get in for a penny, in for a pound. If I'm going to the Abyss to train melee, I want 75 attack, strength and defense so I can call melee Abyss training done. We knocked out level 60 in our melee stats pretty quickly, allowing us to upgrade to a Dragon Halberd for even faster XP rates. But by the time we got to 67 in all our stats, which conveniently got us 1800 total level, nice! We'd run out of time to train, because I'd done something a little bit silly. I'd signed up for a full raid. Not just Beastmaster, but the full Yakimaru experience. Before the raid, I had time to use the Crimson Charms I'd gathered from Croesus to get 52 summoning so I could use Terra Birds to carry 12 extra food. Then we went to Smith and Orichalcum Shield. It's the wrong combat style, but it's the highest tier shield I can get right now, so it'll have to do. We're still woefully undergeared for the fight. We really need tier 90 weapons, overloads, tier 95 prayers, and tier 80 plus armor. We have none of that. These hench gamers have invited me along despite being undergeared and said all I have to do is try and stay alive. That's going to be easier said than done though. Not only can Yakamaru hit quite hard, but it is a long fight with a lot of mechanics to deal with, including more than one potential insta-kill. But Yakamaru has double the drop rate for unique items, so this might just be worth the risk. The Beastmaster fight went smoothly, so we proceeded through to clear the jellies and solve the lock to the entrance for the fight. There was a bit of a scuff on the first pull, so the team called out to restart, and I discovered that a very quick way out is to stun the stun pool. The second attempt, I didn't get out of the way of the sharks at the shark pool fast enough, and they broke my sign of life, so I had to teleport. Third time's a charm though, right? This time I made it to the last pool before Mirage phase, before my ring of life broke. The team got the kill, so I went back to claim some loot. Nothing special from Beastmaster, but like we said, Yakamaru has twice the drop rate for uniques. 
Oh, and we just got our first base camp codex. Sheesh, nice. We've signed up for a double, so it's time for another kill. The second kill, we melted Beast Master. Yakamaru was a lot smoother, and I made it to Mirage phase before I had another very close call and broke another ring of life. The team cleared the final phase, no issues, so we went to check what was in store in the chest. Nothing special from Beastmaster loot again, but Yakka gives us back to back codexes? I can't even unlock Corruption Shot with this one yet because I don't have 70 ranged. I feel like this raid was our best worst decision yet. There's definitely a carry by the team there, so I might wait until I have decent enough gear to last the whole fight before we try this again. It was uh, pretty spooky. <laughs> The next day, before we got back to melee training, we were knocking out a Barrow's Reaper when this happened. Alrighty, lucky last. Let's go! Oh, nice! We got Carol's boy! Heck yeah! Oh, that was worth it! And that was our 60th Reaper task. It put us just over 300 Reaper points again. I decided to spend some of them to unlock instance cost reduction, which saves us a few GP when starting up boss encounters. After that, it was back to the Abyss to finish getting my melee stats to 75. It took a few more hours of grinding, but we got there in the end. I figured it would be a good idea to whip up some Necronium armor now that I can wear it too. I reckon Necronium armor looks pretty cool, to be honest. And here we are wrapping up the Secrets of the Inquisition mystery, getting ourselves 70 archaeology and receiving Aurelius's mask, which can be used to unlock the Shadow's Grace Relic. I think we should hand in all our relics at the Monolith, as that is the main reward for training archaeology. We're unlocking Ring of Luck, Ring of Wealth, and Ring of Fortune, which give tier 1, 2, or 3 luck respectively, without the need to wear the ring. We also unlock Patch Protector, which will come in handy for training ring crafting down the line. Saving the best for last, we're unlocking Shadow's Grace, which halves the cooldown for movement abilities like Surge, Dive, and Escape. This will make getting around a lot faster. When setting up my relics, I decided to use Font of Life for extra hit points, Shadow's Grace, and Unexpected Diplomacy for faster rep and Menophos when I go back to fish there again. With 70 archaeology out of the way, I think that my AFK time should be on getting the ores together for 80 smithing and I did some maths and if I go do the Borax and Dorix tasks and get all the bonus XP from that Gafanon amulet and put it into smithing I should need to make six Necronium burial sets to get to 80 smithing which means I need about 1150 Necronium and Phasmatite ores. Good few hours of AFKing later and I've mined up all the ores for 80 smithing. I also knocked out the Doric and Boric tasks for the Gafanon amulet and bonus smithing experience it provides. Along the way we passed 81 mining so I can mine red sandstone daily and start stocking up on that to make flasks when I get to 89 crafting. Just quickly wrapping up a Dagonoth King Reaper and we just got 75 Slayer, a requirement for City of Centerston to unlock Animate Dead. Man, there's so much good stuff to look forward to. Finishing up a KBD event in the Wildy and this lamp here just got us 60 ranged. The very Wildy bag gives us two caskets. Nice, I think I'll stash those for later. Oh, and there we go! That case just got us level 92 in the divination skill. Halfway to 99 in our first skill, that's pretty, pretty impressive. No, uh, no useful unlocks, sadly, but still feels big. Time to get back to quests and rescue King Arthur from the Black Knights and King's Ransom. This lets us do the Nightwave's training mini quest to unlock Piety, Rigor, and Augury. The three most powerful damage boosting normal sprayers are giving plus eight levels for attack and defense, and increasing damage output by 8%. After that I wanted to do a little more prep for the invention grind, so we did some dungeoneering to get 20,000 dungeoneering tokens so I could upgrade my gem bag. The plan for 80 crafting is cutting gems mined in Alcarid, the exact same as we did for 61, so the gem bag will be a big help. And then we went on a bit of a detour to Pond and Leech to complete smoking kills to unlock access to the Slayer Point shop where we can learn to fetch broad arrows. I think we'll do the Slayer a little bit later on as I want to unlock Dive first for the extra mobility when moving between tasks. Well, we have just finished another evil tree. What do we get? Oh, triple salvage from the first sack. That's quite pretty nice. No salvage, but we did get some weapon burns from that. That's all right. I'm not going to complain about the ashes, actually. I've almost got enough to get my prayer outfit. And another little salvage from that. That's really cute. Okay, what do we get from the very willies? Oh, just a lucky charm and back bolts. You know what? I think we'll just put the rest of these bags in our bank until the end of this episode. Okay, so to unlock dive, we have a little bit of work to do. First, we have to kill 144 demons in the wilderness for the gross misconduct achievement. I chose Greater Demons in the Florence Dungeon as that seemed like the easiest option. Then we have to complete Daughter of Chaos. I quite 
enjoyed this quest. It's lore rich and has some engaging combat scenes, and grants us the infernal puzzle box at tier 2, which increases damage dealt to monsters in the wilderness by 5% and reduces incoming damage by 10%. Next, it was busting out Civil War 1, 2, and 3 mini quests to upgrade the puzzle box to tier 3, 4, then 5, unlocking some awesome new upgrades. Tier 3 prevents adrenaline from being drained outside of combat, tier 4 gives a 25% increase to XP from crawling gloves, and tier 5 allows you to cut more bloodwood logs and fletch for criminal bolts faster. We can't do that last one yet, but handy for later. Finally, we have all the requirements to complete Succession and unlock Dive. This quest took quite a while and is another lore-packed beast with some solid cutscenes. This gave us the tier 6 puzzle box, which can be added to your tool belt so you have those perks active all the time. We also unlocked the dive ability so we can get around faster. Still off on a detour and we knocked out as a first resort for access to the meat shop in Uglog so we could start stockpiling meat for our player-owned farms to feed spiders and dragons when we get there. We also knocked out bringing home the bacon which is required for the contract clause mystery to then unlock ancient summoning. I just figured it would be a good one to do while we're out doing random things. So we're about to get back to the invention grind and we just got 60 plus in all stats but invention from these butterflies. For the spring event. That ended on the 16th of April. Yeah, we're a bit behind on editing right now. That just means there's more content to come. Well, we have just finished up our Tears of Gothics weekly and we just got 61 rune crafting, which is uh, the level required for the Prisoner of Gloffrey, the highest rune crafting level requirement for any quest, so we can take one more skill off the list on our road to quest cave. Oh, and there we go, level 80 smithing. It's one of the requirements for invention. I'm just going to finish these burial sets really quickly and then it's going to be time to go mine the gems for 80 crafting. Oh, I've uh, whipped myself up a Bane pickaxe plus four so I can go mine the gems we need for 80 crafting to finally get invention unlocked. And while I was at it, I whipped up a Bane ore box and a Bane mattock as well because, you know, might as well, right? Anyway, let's go mine some gems. It took us a good few hours to mine the gems we needed from the Alcarid mine. We needed enough for 1.3 million crafting XP to get us to level 80. We got it done though. In the end we mined 8,800 sapphires, 5,500 emeralds and 4,500 rubies. It might be a bit close, but I have a few hundred diamonds and dragonstones banked for the re from reaper tasks to take us over the finish line. We did end up dipping into the dragonstones to finish level 80 crafting, but there you go. Invention unlocked. We just need to do the tutorial. First, I want to quickly upgrade my bowl for Tears of Guthics. More free XP and our lowest skill every week can only be a good thing. Okay, time to get inventing. We had a wee yarn with Doc and he taught us the basics of invention. Disassembling, discovering, augmenting and making perks. I'm well excited to have this skill unlocked. It's a game changer for down the line. For now, I don't have much to augment, but we can work on that later. With that huge milestone out of the way, it's time to wrap up some unfinished business from earlier and unlock broad bolt fletching from the Slayer shop. This will allow us to buy a total of 6,000 arrowheads per day from the Slayer Master in Lumbridge and Berthorpe. The plan here is simple. Do tasks 1 to 9 at Slayer Master in Lumbridge using NPC contact to get new tasks. Most of the tasks should be in the Lumbridge catacombs, making them fast and easy. Then we do every 10th task at the highest level Slayer Master we can. For us, that's Duradel in Shryla Village, who gives 75 points for every 10th task. For our 20th task, Duradel decided to assign Black Dragons. This coincides with our Queen Black Dragon Reaper, so I decided to try and get our first ever kills there. First I needed some anti-fires, so I pinched a few feathers from the Desert Phoenix and made some. And then it was time for our first Queen Black Dragon kill on the account. I'll let Coach from stream tell you how that went. OH SHIT! Forgot about that mechanic. Saved by our ring of life. We still had a sign up, so we weren't in too much danger there, but uh... Spooky again. Of course we went straight back for revenge and we managed to get the kill. Twitch chat was telling me to go to Song from the Depths for the damage reduction, so off we went. It only took a moment and we went back to knock out the rest of the Reaper task. With that done, I was back to getting Slayer points, 
and our third Duradel task was jungle strike worms. And we managed to pick up a hex craze, which increases magic accuracy and damage against your current slayer assignment. It took 40 tasks total to get the 300 points we needed, but we got there and now we can fletch broad arrows and bolts and buy broad arrowheads daily for the fletching training. With the inventing grind out of the way, I need something new to do in my AFK time. Probably unsurprisingly, we're going to be doing some more fishing. Before I do that, I want to build the prawn broker for the aquarium in our player owned house. This will allow us to catch prawn balls while we're fishing. These little guys have a chance to bring us golden fish eggs, which when handed in give prawn points that you can spend on neat unlocks, like not needing bait when you fish. The main objective here is to get to 82 so I can stew boost 88 to get the fungal algae required to repair the core hammer that's currently sitting in my bank. So we're going to be fishing here in our downtime for the next little bit. Later that night we were doing an infernal star event when I saw this. It turned out to be Mod Shogun, who came along towards Retreat after and turned everyone into gobies. And then Christmas decorations. He also gave us a Valentine's card and a broken heart, which I think I might keep. Now that I've collected up a little bit of fish in Menafoss, I actually want a slightly better spot to cook it than the Land of Snow. So I think I'm going to knock out Murder on the Border so that I can build my kitchen. And while I'm at it, I might as well get unwelcome guests done so I can build the guardhouse too. Well, there we go. That is murder on the border completed. We have a kitchen at Fort Foreign 3. Absolutely nobody was murdered in my fort because it is perfectly safe. And we also get a little construction XP lamp with 8k. And that takes us to 69 construction. Nice. Alrighty, let's get unwelcome guests underway now so that I can build the guardhouse at Fort Foreign 3 as well for those juicy little slayer buffs. Alrighty, and there we go. Unwelcome guests complete. I can now build the Fort Foreign 3 guardhouse. Delightful. Another quest point there is fantastic to have out of the way. Those, uh, those two new quests. Now, I've checked in my bank and I've done a little bit of accounting and I could make enough teak frames and stone wall fragments to upgrade my workshop, kitchen, and town hall all to tier 2. That's quite nice. It'll give me a few cute little buffs. Upgrading my workshop from tier 1 to tier 2 will mean that I'll have a slight increase to the amount of construction XP I'll get while I'm building my other fort upgrades. Upgrading my town hall to tier 2 increases the amount of rested XP I get while I'm training here and the cap for the amount of rested XP that I can stack up. So even more bonus XP in Herblore. Delightful. On top of unlocking the range right next to the bank, which is the best cooking spot in the game, the tier 2 kitchen gives us a 3% reduced chance to burn food while we're cooking in the kitchen, which is where we're going to be cooking from here on out. I felt a bit weird having level 75 and all my melee stats and magic, but range trailing behind at 66. So I grabbed some jumpers and went back to the abyss to grind out 75 range. This seems to be yet another one of the requirements for Plague's End. Maybe we should think about taking the hint. It also means we can use Vanquish as our ranged weapon, which is a huge upgrade from Rune Crossbows. Then it was back to questing and we went for Mountain Daughter, which unlocks one of the easiest bosses in the Dominion Tower, the Kendall. But there's only one of them. There's, there's not supposed to beat as many. That was also the last quest we need to unlock the 20 bosses to gain access to the Dominion Tower. But I want to see if we're going to get our hands on a slightly more powerful weapon before we go to start work on that 400 kill count. I thought it would be nice to finish up our last goal of 225 quest points with the Legends quest. While this quest isn't as epic as it once was, it still took us a while to complete. Worth it for the Legends cape, which will give us an easy teleport to a fairy ring, and is our best cape in melee and range at the moment. Before snagging our quest types, let's open up these 14 wildy bags and see what we get. Money and magic logs, money and hunting brawlers, portable obelisk and an easy casket. Nice. Magic logs and bag bolts. And annihilation on our fifth bag. That's a tier 87 for melee. I can't use it yet, but that is huge. Okay, back to opening for a medium casket and bag bolts. Easy casket and back bolts, back bolts and magic logs, magic logs and more back bolts. Final five and we pull a draconic visage, another really nice item to get. Into ruby chalice and some back bolts. Last three and we get another, an, wait, another annihilation? I mean, I guess it's free invention XP. Then it's black dragon egg and back bolts and double black dragons to finish. I guess I won't have to worry about a breeding pair for those, and we're more than sorted for a melee weapon after that opening. And as customary by now, let's wrap things up with a quest dice for... 1 million GP and Blue Dragon High Chaps G. Easy fortunate components. If you've made it this far through the video, then thank you. Make sure to tune in next time when we start the grind to unlock Priftiness and get some crazy upgrades along the way.